In this video, we are going to make a picture frame deck. This video does not include how to install the joists, as that will be covered in another video. In some countries, you need permission to build a deck, so it's best to check with your local building control before starting work. This deck is not actually a deck, it is actually a cover for a sand pit lid. To the right of the picture is the sand pit, which is approximately 2.4 meters square. The lid is motorized and slides on runners under the deck on the left hand side. The sand pit cover is completely waterproof and also has a picture frame decking pattern to match. When planning the deck, you need to ensure that the joists are installed in such a way that the decking boards have adequate support, especially at the ends of the boards. It's critical that the deck is built squarely, as it is much easier installing a picture frame onto a square deck. This is one example of how you could position the joists for a picture frame deck. You can install the boards in any direction, even diagonally, as long as you plan the joists correctly. Because this is being picture frames, we need to ensure that there is support alongside of the joists to enable handrail fixing at a later date and also to support the ends of the decking boards. Because the top is being installed before the sides, we need to screw on some pieces of decking into each corner to help us align the deck boards on top. There is also a 6mm piece of plywood being placed behind each decking board in the corner to ensure that the top of the deck overhangs the sides of the deck by at least 6 millimeters. These pieces are only temporary and only require one screw to hold them in position. Basically what we are doing now is constructing the frame part of the deck. This is achieved by cutting the opposing deck board to the identical size. So both side pieces will be identical and the front and back will also be identical. This ensures that you either end up with a square or a rectangle. All of the corners should be cut and fixed at 45 degrees. It's easier demonstrating this part on the bench, so I'll now demonstrate using these two offcuts. Once you have cut the mitres, you can see that they fit together perfectly, but we need to reinforce the corner. So I'm going to use a biscuit to reinforce the joint, and then I'm going to put a screw through from the side there that will hold the frame together. When you're making the frame, it is a lot easier if it is square, so you always make sure that your two pieces that are opposite each other are exactly the same length. That way you either end up with a square or a rectangle, which is a lot easier for when you come to put your infill pieces inside of the frame. I've set the biscuit joiner up for the correct depth and the correct size biscuit. And now I'm going to apply some exterior grade wood glue. And then I'm going to insert the biscuit. You will notice that I've put a bit of a slot in this so we do have a bit of movement just to ensure that we get the mitre perfectly set up. We've got a good amount of wood glue on there. I'm not going to push that into the mating part. I'm now going to put a screw in there to hold that together. So I'm going to use the trend drill bit and countersink bit. And I'm going to just drill a hole there. And I'm going to drive in this screw. Now 
you then end up with a decent looking mitre for the corner like that. You can of course put some wood filler in there, that will prevent the screw from being seen. I should also point out that you do need to use an external rust proof screw. Once you've done this in all four corners and you have glued and screwed everything and the glue has set, you are then left with a large frame. You can then position the frame on the deck until you get it in the exact correct position before fixing that in position with some external wood screws. You now need to measure the size of the deck on the inside. I've just measured the width on the inside of the deck and it comes to 3325 millimeters. The actual boards that are going across there are 150 mil each. So if we now divide that by 150, we get 22.1. So to fill that space up completely, you need 22.1 boards at 150 mil. This is where we work out the actual spacing between the boards. If we, for example, use a six mil spacing, so we'll go back to three, three, two, five, and then we'll divide that by one, five, six, which is 150 mil plus a six mil gap. That equals 21.31. What we need to do is get the figure down as close as possible to zero after the decimal point. That way you are working with full boards, you do not need to cut any boards down then. So I'll cancel that again. Put in the 3325. And then we'll divide that by 158. Which equals 21.044. That is as close as we are going to get it. So we now know that we need... 21 boards to fill that gap up completely and we need an 8 mm gap between each one it's very approximate you may need to adjust it slightly and put an 8 mm in some 7 mm in others just to get it looking right but we now know that we need an 8 mm spacer in between each board to fill up that gap completely and we need 21 full boards when cutting the deck boards to length you must ensure that an expansion gap is left Never try and butt up the pieces together as they will expand when wet. On this deck I have an approximate gap of 8 to 10 millimetres at both ends. You can now position all of the boards and use suitable spaces to give you the desired gap. In this demonstration I have used some glazing packers to give an 8 millimetre gap. You can now screw the boards down using suitable decking screws. Normally I place two screws into each board wherever there is a joist. Be aware that once decking screws are screwed in, there is a slim chance of removing them without the edge snapping off unless you drill a pilot's hole first. You will notice that in the middle of the deck I have placed two long lengths of deck boards on top. This is to remind us not to put any screws in the middle four deck boards as this is being made into a full length access panel in order to get to the running gear for the sand pit lid. There is also a similar sized access panel at the back of the deck. I hope this video has helped, if it has and you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel.